For the first time in three weeks, this is the Brisbane Lions fan cast. News has uh, rendered our last two shows irrelevant, Mike, but we are back now and there is a lot we haven't covered. Boy, we're back. <laughs> it's three weeks. It's been a long time. I mean, we've recorded shows in the last two weeks, haven't we, Dom? But um, from the time when we've recorded to the next 24 hours after that, there's been big news evolving each time. We had um, the Michael Voss situation two weeks ago and then last week we had news of a split in the board so our content has been totally irrelevant and useless by the time <laughs> it would have gone to air so we've had to, to ditch those two but we're back this week and plenty to get through yeah there definitely is uh just a brief roundup of the news we haven't uh yet been through there was a michael voss situation i think enough's been said about that for now so there's no need to dwell any further springfield which was a great announcement for the club going forward after that pierce hanley signed a five-year contract which was great and uh, then we've had the board spill. So I think that's all the news we've missed. Am I right? Yeah, that's about all. Not, 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 it's been a pretty quiet couple yeah, of weeks, hasn't quiet, it? Yeah, been quiet, yeah. No, it's been an amazing couple of weeks because from the start of the season, uh, I think as a journo and as fans, we probably looked at it and went, okay, there's a couple of big storylines here. There's Michael Voss because he's out of contract and we have to see what happens with him. Uh, there is the new training base, which has been resolved as well. Uh, and there's probably the future of some key players, Lewenberger, Rich, Hanley particularly, and then the future of our uh, veterans, Brown and Black. Oh, now, nearly... no, knowing our luck, they're going <laughs> to announce their retirement tomorrow <laughs> morning and this won't go up at and all. you won't hear this. Yeah. No, but <laughs> but um, it's, uh, everything's happened in the last two weeks. It's been quite amazing. But, uh, and it's, they've all sort of been, uh, particularly the Voss and the board spill, it's all been interlocked and... It's been uh, quite messy in some respects, but um, I guess it's given clarity in a few others. So, boy, I don't, I don't <laughs> even know where to start, to be honest. It's been, my head's been spinning for two weeks, probably like everyone else's. And quite unbelievably, amongst all of this, we are actually a finals chance. That's <laughs> the other one. We can actually, the, probably the one thing we can talk about today that we have probably would have neglected the last two weeks is some on-field action because, because of Essendon. There was that other little storyline going on down in Melbourne. The Essendon saga's come to a conclusion and now the Brisbane Lions are effectively in uh, I'd say effectively in ninth spot it's hard to know with all these effectively one spot out of the mm. the eight anyway and with a chance to to, to sneak in unbelievably <laughs> despite all of this coach gone board spill quite a, quite incredible isn't it who would have thought we'd get to a stage after the year we've had the ups the downs everything that's happened where we would be genuinely a chance at making the finals now obviously we're up against Geelong in Geelong which is footy's toughest challenge um, and we do have to rely on Port Adelaide beating what I imagine will be a very hungry Carlton. But we do things have happened. 100% they have. Um, Carlton should have been hungry last week against mm. a very vulnerable Essendon. And it's also Port Adelaide's last ever game at Amy Stadium. That's right. I think Carlton, they have not impressed me at all the past couple of weeks particularly. Port Adelaide coming off a bit of a hammering to Frio. But we've seen how resilient Port Adelaide are this year. I think they'll get the job done. But it still comes down to Brisbane winning in Geelong, which you touched on, and you're exactly right. Toughest trip in footy. There is no question. You can talk about the Swans at the SCG might be the only one that can rival it. The teams in WA are very tough to beat, but over a long period, Geelong are near on unbeatable at home. I think the stat was 48 of their last 50, 50 they've won there, yeah. which is just beyond belief, really. Pretty, pretty handy, isn't it? It's like trying to beat the All Blacks in New Zealand. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. But you've given yourself a chance, haven't you? you like you said, you would not have thought this. And probably the, the game that started the run was ironically against Geelong back mm. at the Gabba. We know that Ash McGrath after the siren and the, the enormous comeback victory probably started to slowly turn the wheel for Brisbane at the midpoint of the season. So uh, there's a chance, and it's probably a small one, but it is a chance. As a team, like, I haven't done the stats, but uh, to your knowledge, has a team made the finals before with an interim coaching? Because I can't imagine it would be a, a regular occurrence. Yeah, it's probably not something I've looked at, to be honest, Dom. And you think you'd be uh, right there. It'd be hard to think <laughs> of one off the top of your head where an interim coach would take a... Especially an interim coach so late in the season. Mm. Yeah, this I mean, decision wasn't made in round nine or no, round ten. Think possibly that might have occurred before, where there's been a mid-season switch and there's been a like a more extended run for that coach to get the team uh, into the finals. But th this has been an incredible circumstances, n not only at this club but with the competition. I mean, effectively playing for ninth to get you into the finals that's never happened before. So it is the sort of the back door way of getting in. But that's no one's fault other than Essendon. So those teams like Brisbane and Carlton and Adelaide, North Melbourne, West Coast, they you're not going to turn away an opportunity. So a lot up for grabs. <laughs> yeah, there definitely is. Uh, to beat Geelong, you, you need to think a few things will happen. Firstly, I, th I think we're going to need to rely on 
uh, hope that Brent Maloney might pass a fitness test and line up. He would be a massive inclusion. Yeah, he was. And as we were recording this on a Wednesday this week, and um, the Lions had training this morning, so we saw the first half hour to an hour of that. And Maloney was running around quite okay um, before we were asked to leave the session. So it's hard to know how he'll come up, but he's had a hamstring. And is it worth rolling the dice? Well, maybe it is. If, it, if you're ever going to roll the dice, maybe this is the time to do it, isn't it? And, it, I mean, look, it would have been great had Frio lost on the weekend because then Geelong would have really been had nothing to play for. Mm. But right now they are actually playing for a home final. If they lose this match, it's looking likely they will have to go over to, to Fremantle and play them in the first week. And I'm sure they don't really want to do that. So they're fighting for a lot there too. The good news is that for the first time since 2009, we go into the final round of the season with our season still alive. And that that is really exciting in itself. It is. And also the fact that Brisbane and Geelong happens first. Then the uh, Port Adelaide and Carlton match goes after that. So there'll be nothing decided. It'll still be in Brisbane's hands at that stage. So they can go out with a clear head and know that if they win, they've, they've put themselves in with an opportunity. So Brisbane will have to play like they did in the first half against the Bulldogs but I'll have to do it for four quarters, not two. Speaking of which, have you found that a bit odd that ever since Voss left and Harvey took over, all of a sudden our first halves have become good and, and our <laughs> second half's average? It's, it's completely reversed around. I hadn't thought about that, but there is a bit of irony, in the, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So that is uh, the on-field. Also, the reserves are, are in the finals, which is exciting this week. Yep. Um, I haven't actually seen the, the exact date and time of that match. It will be on lions.com.au. Go and, and check it out because, um, you know, they are the reigning premiers, the cross-conference premiers as well. This is the last year that the Neefel is in the mm. um, in the format yep. it's in. So, you know, it's a bit of history there to, to grab that. That reserves team has been terrific this year. And, and as we've seen, when a lot of the guys have stepped up to senior level, they have been able to contribute. So it is one of your final chances to see these guys run around in the NEFL competition in its current format. Yeah. Uh, now, just before we, we wrap up today, we really should touch a bit more on this board issue. So what's happened? Paul Williams and Mick Power, uh, who are two board members who've been there for a fair while. I think Mick Power is the latest addition to the board. They um, they have challenged Angus Johnson and the current board set up. They want to uh, take leadership of the board and their ticket is supported by Lee Matthews, which many have said is the, the knockout blow there. And apparently the reason given was that uh, they believe Angus botched the recruitment of Paul Ruse. Now, I don't know if we were ever a good chance of getting Paul Ruse in the first place, so I don't really know what the, the situation is there. But it's fair to say that if this Essendon saga hadn't happened the past week, we would have probably been number one on the AFL agenda. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think that's been a... Well, you, you could say it's a blessing. I mean, it's a blessing in the broader spectrum of AFL coverage, but it's not escaping from the fact that it's probably a disruption to the club. It's something you'd prefer to not have to go through. And, and you're right, the words filtering out is that the Williams Power Matthews ticket believed that Angus Johnson did, and their words were botched the potential recruitment of Ruse. And I think the issue came back to the fact that they thought that Angus probably should have broadened the net a little bit, I suppose, and sought a bit more assistance when it came to dealing with Paul rather than apparently sort of going out on his own. But, um, I mean, it's not an ideal situation, is it? No matter which way, and you're not... I don't think anyone's trying to... You know, we're not trying to align ourselves here, but you're just trying to get the best outcome for the Brisbane Lions. And I think there's been one positive step in the last week, and that's getting Lee Matthews onto the subcommittee to select the coach. From my point of view, any way you can get Lee Matthews involved with the club is is can only be positive. Oh, yeah. He was the <laughs> premiership coach. So any way you can get him involved is is terrific. So in some regards, it was big of Lee to come and sit on this subcommittee when he clearly <laughs> is on a ticket that wants to overthrow the current board. So, that I mean, that's another positive. Yeah, you're not wrong. And they have uh, n- announced, or I don't know if they've announced it or if they've just released it in some form, but uh, the candidates who are being looked at, I think maybe Paul Williams mentioned it at one stage, you've got the ones you expected. You've got the uh, the Rodney Eads, you've got Mark Williams, you've got, um, I don't know who else is there, Ellen Richardson, I think, was mentioned. So there's definitely the, the quality coaches there. And another one who comes up a lot recently is Neil Craig, which um one from left field, I think. But it seems that, that he is one of the leading candidates for the job at the moment. I was going to say, as we discussed on this show, but we didn't because it never went to air. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as we've probably discussed between ourselves, there's sort of two baskets here of coaches, isn't there? There's the experienced guys with a proven record that have proved that they can take their teams to the top four. And that is Rodney Eade. Mark Williams, Neil Craig, etc. And then there's the untried uh, senior assistant coaches, I suppose, the, the Alan Richardsons, the Adam Simpsons, the Scott Burns, these type of characters. So they're almost sort of two separate camps, and which one do you want? Do you want the guy that's got the proven record, or do you want the new blood that you think can take the Lions into a top four bracket? Who would have thought 
four, three or four weeks ago when we went and played Richmond at the MCG that all of this was coming. <laughs> because that day, I remember it was like, well, we, we tried in the second half. The season's petering out a little bit. Well, that's that's been a good season, you know, ups and downs. And then the next, uh, the four weeks that have followed have just been the most insane in the club in a long time. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's just been, a, as you said, that I remember after that Richmond game, thinking, oh, well, you know, you tried hard, boys. They fought hard in the second half of that game. And... You know, it'll be a good, solid sort of nine or ten win season. We'll wait till the end of the season. Vossi will have his contract sorted out then, one one way or the other. Uh, the coaching saga will play out sort of after the season finishes, and uh, Hanley will resign, and it'll all just be sort of quite ho hum, and we'll see what happens. But no, it's all turned on its head. <laughs> <laughs> I, we we had actually recorded this. You'd put to me last week, which wasn't Ed. Who do you think the Lions will end up with as a coach? Do you have a feeling on that, or well, okay? So from a fan's perspective. What sort of coach would you like to see? Paul Ruse is still the holy <laughs> yeah. he? he still is. I'm not going to lie. And at- last week I did give the answer of Paul Ruse. I was still uh, holding out hope it might happen. But I'm, you know, as soon as I think I heard Lee Matthews say mm. almost no chance. Ab- about, n- about about nil. nil. Yeah, I think that was the coach. Yeah. <laughs> Um, about nil and it wasn't Lee, nil <laughs> Lee Matthews well he's not one who, who minces no. his words so um, that to me was an indication that that's unlikely so I'm thinking of the ones left I would love Mark Williams um, I, I do really rate him as a coach he's a premiership coach which can't be mm. forgotten and I know there is a lot of angst around Lions fans about him because <laughs> no when one, he did no coach one, that premiership I was just saying no one forgets that he's a premiership <laughs> coach <laughs> If I had to take a punt right now, just because of the word that's been going around, because of the the record, because of who we've got on the committee, I reckon Neil Craig is lining up to be uh, likely our next senior coach. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like I'm, I've changed my mind. I mean, we spoke about this seven days ago between between ourselves, and I've probably ch- changed my mind two or three times. And I don't, well, I don't have any knowledge about who's going to be the coach. The subcommittee doesn't have any. <laughs> clue at this stage because there, all these people are yet to be uh, spoken to formally as far as a formal interview goes. So my my leanings towards Rodney Ede, and that's under no no knowledge whatsoever. But I just think that he's a guy that has proven himself. He's taken the team to a grand final. He he still wants to coach at the senior level. So I mean, we'll see what happens. But uh, I guess so. There, I, I guess us two have lent towards the senior guys with the proven record, haven't we? So whether that comes to fruition or not, I guess we'll see. <laughs> and I, I don't know when. There's no time frame. So, the, but the quick, the quicker the better. How, how crucial is it, Dom, to sort this out? Say by the end of the season. The thing is, um, the the members or the fans group, the Lions Roar, have been trying to get signatures actually to call an EGM to settle this board matter because currently we are in a position where things are very much up in the air and you don't know where we're going to be in a month's time. You almost need resolution at board level before you can start thinking about resolution of the coaching saga and you really need resolution of the coaching saga ideally very ideally before the trade period because you need a coach to come in and say who, which players they want for the game plan that they want to take forward and then look at you know who you're going to keep on the list who you want to bring into the list you can't really go into that period not knowing what game plan you want going forward and what coach is going to be leading you there and that's something we might get to look at uh, on next week's show after the possibly after the season's finished we don't know after the season <laughs> we finish next week but is the implications on the list because as you touched on there you're exactly right when when a new coach comes in no matter who that is no matter where they come from whether it's someone that might be at the club already we don't know or whether it's someone from outside they're going to have different ideas on which players do and don't work and and there's a lot of players still out of contract at the moment that are um, in various stages of negotiation so that must have some influence on how the list is shaped for next year and so how quickly that's resolved. Well, for example, I mean, if they went from left field and gave me the job, you know, come easy, <laughs> eight years, a million a year. <laughs> um, that but, would yeah. be a turn up for the books. <laughs> <laughs> so that is all about, uh, just about all we've got time for on the fan cast today. Next week, will be massive either way. We will either be talking finals, which is still a bit beyond belief, or we'll be wrapping up the season. We'll be looking forward to the, uh, the trade period. We'll be chatting about the club champion, which is at this stage next Friday night. Mm. Um, And we are hoping to get a a chat with someone about the the list management going forward as well. So next week's show is going to be absolutely massive. Don't miss it. Until then, that's the Fancast. Bye. See ya.